Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the concluding part of our boot making. So we're going to last this derby boot, and that will include everything from preparation of the stiffness. These are the back stiffness, and these are some of the tools and equipment that we're going to use in this process. So it will start first of all by you know preparing our stiffness and our insoles. So the insoles were prepared to match the the shape of the last, which also matches the shape of the sole that we're going to use, the outsole. So I'm using a pre-made outsole for this project. So here I have attached the insole to the last. Now let's get stiffness ready for action. So we sharpen our knife and strop it very well. Place it on a hard granite and then skive off the edges. The edges of the back stiffener or the backstay, the counter stiffener, that's the name for it, is also called backstay. So you skive off the edges so that you don't have that bodge at the back at the counter region of the shoe then we also cut the front stiffness also known as the front stay cut it into shape and then we would also skive the edges i have actually um, done a video dedicated to how to do front and back back um, stiffness you can find them at the top right hand corner so we skive just like we did before for the backstay we skive off the edge so that in front at the front part of the top off you don't see any bulge protruding in that area so this is my strop I use it to get my knife in a sharp enough position to skive. So I do the same thing for this one and then we will, you know, get ready to put the backstay onto the shoe itself. So we measure the distance of the counterpoint and mark it on the inside part of the counter of the shoe. And that is the point from where the tip of our backstay will commence. I'm just cutting a notch at the middle of the backstay to give myself an indication of where it ought to start. So it will be installed like this. First of all, I add some glue. Now pay attention to the process of adding the backstay. I've seen several people making a mess of this. You don't put any glue on the backstay itself, on the stiffener itself. You put your glue on the upper leather, the inside part of the upper leather. Then you install your stiffeners, put it in the appropriate position where it's supposed to be. Then you now put some glue on the inside part of the stiffener. Not on the lining, but on the back side of the stiffener itself. So you put your glue on it like this, such that by the time you lift back up your lining, you are not making a mess. So by the time you lift back up your lining, you will not be making a mess. So all you need to do is to stretch the entire thing along the center lines. And then, you know, a few adjustments here and there. And your lining will be well installed in between your upper. Your stiffener will be well installed in between your upper and your linings. Now let's get to last thing. First of all, I pull up the entire thing such that the feather edge at the back corresponds with the um, where the insole touches the last itself and then i pull all the way through at this 12 o'clock position and put a tack there if you're using nails it's the same process so i'll put a tack 
Then the second nail or tack that I'll put is at the 10 o'clock position. Put that and secure in place. Turn to see that everything is aligned. And then the third tack at the 2 o'clock position. Then the fourth tack will be at the 9 o'clock position. You notice that I'm grabbing both the upper and the lining as I'm pulling. And then the fifth tack will be at the 3 o'clock position. Tack it there. Now, this is not one of the recommended tacks. I'm just using it to support the 3 o'clock position tack. Now, I'm going to turn the shoe at the back. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Turn it and remove this initial tack. that initial tack that we used in securing the thing in place and then pull the shoe to the point where the line of the feather edge on the upper lies you know flush at the insole so if it was a shoe the back height point would have been on the back height point and then we'll put We'll put a tack here to secure it in place. So, so far we have put six tacks or six nails. There are two more nails or tacks that we need to put. So, this one at this point, at the waist of the last. For this one, I'm pulling only on the lining, even though I pulled on the upper and lining just to draw it down first. But I'm tacking only on the lining. Then on the reverse side of the waist as well, I'll pull and tack down. Now this brings to a conclusion the tacking of my eight cardinal nails. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So the eight cardinal nails. Now once I have these eight cardinal nails in place, I will simply remove the nails up to the three and nine o'clock position and then you know tack the linings in those areas as well once i have tacks up to my three and nine o'clock position solely on the lining i'll go ahead and remove all of the other nails so that i'll be able to fine tune and you know pull on just the lining itself and have all the wrinkles that may have formed completely removed so in doing this i'll use the same procedure so i start at the 12 o'clock pull there tightly until all wrinkles are removed then i go to the 10 o'clock and also pull tightly and tack then i go to two o'clock pull tightly and then you know three o'clock just a little above the three o'clock pull tightly and then just sorry a little above the nine o'clock and now just a little above the three o'clock if i need fine tuning and any adjustments i'll do that by the time you're done with this you find that your lining is completely flat and well adjusted to your last and your vamp lasting will be excellent once you have your linings you know very well done um it's easier to get your uppers to fall in place right now i'm just you know on alternate positions just um adding tacks around the circumference of this lining so that you know by the time i add glue the glue will not sip into the the glue will not seep into the inside of the last itself so i'm making final adjustments on the linings you know adding tacks all around it 
also in preparation for you know gluing down the linings so right now I put my glue around the circumference of the insole making sure to you know catch all of the perimeter of the lining itself so I'll do all of that and leave it to dry and then couple it in now something that is very important um, when you are gluing in your line into your insoles is to make sure you remove all the tacks or nails with which you secured your insole to your last you will not be able to pull off the shoe from the last if every single one of those tacks or nails are not removed so i have done that so for the second pair let's just do a speed through let's quickly breeze through the process of lasting up the second pair since we've already talked about it in the first pair so it's exactly the same process so let's begin to glue back in the lining on the insole now I need you to take note of how I couple this heel area first of all I trim off the excess material then I go at it small pleats after small pleats just small pleats after small pleats and you won't have rumples or wrinkles that extend beyond your feather edge is exactly <clears throat> the same principle around the toe area so I first of all remove the tacks supporting that area now take note that this is after the glue is thoroughly dry then go small pleats after small pleats small pleats after small pleats on the other side small pleats after small pleats and you're able to finish off all of it the most important thing is to ensure that there is no rumple or wrinkle that extends beyond your feather edge when you're done you can skive off the entire thing now we are done with the lasting of the lining what's remaining is to add the top off or front stay and then also secure that in place but before we do that we remove all of the tacks with which we temporarily secured the lining to the insole so now we are going to be working on our on our front stay or otherwise known as our top offs so i glue in the area where it will stay on the tip of the lining once it is dry i'll glue it in fasten the toe puff to that tip and then you know sand it and hammer it down as required so right now i fix in the toe puff being careful not to have many wrinkles i actually try to just have one spot one or two spots where it wrinkles at the pot, at the tip there so that I can go at it with my scissors after I would have you know tightened it up with my lasting pliers I'll cut it off of course with my scissors and then sound out hammer and sand out any bulges that might you know appear so I hammer that down and then also go at it with some sandpaper So sand it down so that I have a smooth, well-finished tip of my cap toe of my shoe or boot when I'm done. So I'll sand that in and then use my white glue 
or woodworker space. There's also a shoemaker space, but I'm not able to um, lay my hands on that in Nigeria. So I use the woodworker space, which basically does the same thing. So add that to this areas, making sure it covers all of the areas as much as possible. And then using the same lasting technique of 12 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 4 and um, 8 o'clock, just to, you know, get everything back in shape. Then I'll leave it overnight or at least for 15 to 24 hours to dry before I start, you know, finishing off everything and coupling everything back in. So this is the point where I am going to, you know, stop running my commentary and just um, leave you guys to observe what's happening. Um, watch the video till the end and then, you know, also do your own part by bringing your boots to this point where you would have lasted all of the uppers and you have added your back stay or your counter stiffness and you've also added your front stay or your front stiffness your toe stiffness and then you know couple everything back into place and have it look good so thank you ladies and gentlemen for hanging up to hanging on till this time this brings to a close our classes on derby boots for the next class we are going into chelsea boots don't forget to like share this video with your friends and subscribe if you've not already done so as always it's been a pleasure having you guys here with me i couldn't have done it without your support so thank you for liking power bespoke god bless you and i wish you a merry christmas in advance and a prosperous 2023 god bless you guys <laughs>